88. I hope you saw that term average rate. This is an average value. This is our average value function, uh, the so-called fav function, right? That's the calculation. So in this case, um, the interval is from 0 to 4. So we'd have 1 over 4 minus 0, and then the integral from 0 to 4. And the integrand, uh, the rate or function, is a little funky. 2 square root of 1 plus 5t cubed dt. And uh, that's the setup. So if we go to the calculator, and uh, I already have, so I'll just bring it up here and uh, present it as, uh, as my work done here. Um, carefully placing everything in, 1 fourth times the integral, 0 to 4, integrand properly placed, we get 14.691, and that corresponds to letter C. On number 89, I've taken and I've written out the derivative of h of x, and it's a product. You need to be very careful to use the product rule when you've got a product. So it's, it's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, right? And now we're going to evaluate h prime at 1. So we're going to put 1 in every time we see an x, and then we're going to go to the list and we're going to say, well, f of 1 is 3. So we take the f of 1 out and we put a 3 in. And f prime 1, f prime 1 is a negative 2. So we put that in for f prime 1. And then g of 1 is negative 3. So we say, well, g of 1 is a negative 3. And uh, finally, g prime 1 is a 4. And we go and make that replacement for g prime 1. And then it's just a question of being very careful about taking and adding and multiplying and getting our signs correct, right? You know, uh, 1 times negative 3 is, or 1 plus a negative 3 is a negative 2, and 2 times a negative 2 is a negative 4, and then when we multiply those together, we get an 8, right? A positive 8. And 9 times 4 is a 36. 36 plus 8 is 44. And when we return back to the top and look at our answer choices, D is it. 90 is a rather unusual question. You have to look at it carefully, and uh, it doesn't take long before you realize that, you know, if you start with x and you apply a rule called g to it, and then secondly you come back and uh, put f to it, you return to x. And conversely, if you start with the f rule and then you apply the g as a secondary uh, step, and you do these to x and you return to x, it means that G and uh, F are inverses. One undoes what the other one does. I don't know if it's, you know, add 3 is F and subtract 3 is G. Maybe it's multiply by 2 is F and divide by 2 is G. Um, there are two operations, two functions that undo each other. They are inverses. So uh, when we learn, for instance, that f of 3 gives us 8, if f of 3 gives us 8, if this is 8, and we apply the g rule to that, we know that this will take us back to 3, right? We know that that's the relationship, that g of 8 is 3. So we know that one of these three must be correct, that it can't be these first two. Secondly, if we know that f of g of x equals x, then we know if we take the derivative of both sides, we have f prime of g of x the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside has to equal the derivative of the right side, and the derivative of the right side is equal to 1. 
Well, if we're talking about finding g prime 8, we're talking about f prime g of 8 times g prime 8 equals 1. Now, we just figured out that g of 8 was the same thing as 3. So f prime 3 times g prime 8 has to equal 1. Well, f prime 3 happened to be given um, above. f prime 3 was 9. So if we bring that replacement down and say, you know, 9 times g prime 8 equals 1, then g prime 8 must equal 1 over 9. And so when we go to our solution possibilities here, it seems to me that for number 90, the only one that works is E, positive one-ninth. A little different problem. For this problem, uh, we need a little fine point, something that I didn't mention in class. I, I mean to. It is a total distance traveled problem. We could make a lot of work out of it. But you know, when we have a velocity, um, we can just accumulate velocity to find um, the displacement or total distance. And uh, if you take the integral of velocity, you'll get the displacement, the change in your place, the displacement. However, if you take the absolute value of velocity, you'll get total distance. Now, I think this should make sense to you because if I've got a velocity function that looks like this and uh, I take it let's say from 0 to some time t let's call it a um, I'll be adding for a while then subtracting and then adding back I will get the displacement the sum of what was positive negative and then positive again on the other hand, if I take the absolute value of my velocity function, notice what will happen. I'll get that first part, and then it'll flip up, right? The absolute value will be positive, and then I'll get that, that part on the end. So if I take the integral now, I'll get the total distance traveled. It'll be a, a positive number. So for this particular problem, I'm going to go to the calculator, and I'm going to say, you know, between times 0 and 4, let's accumulate the absolute value of the velocity function. That is 5t to the e to the negative t uh, minus 1. Let's take the absolute value of that. I've uh, taken the calculator ahead of time, and I've gone off and uh, made that calculation. I've copied it here. Um, the absolute value um, function is located in the same place in the same catalog of functions that you find the integral. It's just up on the row before. So look for it, use it. Um, finding that absolute value, we get 1.821. Uh, I have no idea why the calculator says this. Um, maybe it's something for us to look into when we have more time in our hands. But if we go and take that answer up to the top, we find that D is the one that corresponds. D is our answer for number 91. For this question, the last question, we're asked to uh, think about when does the function attain its maximum value? And uh, we've got a derivative um, and that is a velocity function, and if we accumulate that velocity, we know that we're talking about what ha what's happening to the value of x as uh, the function moves, in this case, between 0 and 2. So I'm going to pick up my calculator here, and um, on the calculator, I'm going to take and make a graph now. So I'm going to say, well, calculator, let's go over and make a graph. And um, this graph, I want it to be the sine of x cubed. So it's going to be the sine of x cubed. Be careful, it's not the sine cube of x. It is the sine of x cubed. 
And um, this is the, this is the guy I want. Um, and let's see now. Um, and I want it between zero and two. So I, I, I just oh, it's kind of noisy this function. I only want to pay attention though between zero and two. So let's go to my menu and say, all right, number four. Let's change this uh, to zero to two and uh, take a look at it from zero to two. And uh, maybe we do even a better job by doing a zoom fit. So on number four, you might go to a zoom fit, that is by pressing an A. And so um, here's, the, here's the story here with this guy. Um, we've got a lot happening. It's accumulating. It's moving, moving, moving in the positive direction. And um, I'm trying to make a note, note on it, and I can't. Um, and then after a while, it begins to be negative, and then it adds back at the end. We need to know um, when it's at its maximum. And um, clearly, just from inspection, we can see that it corresponds to this first moment over here um, on the um, when it crosses the curve. So I'm going to take the calculator's ability here, and I'm going to say, you know, calculator, let's go to the, to the menu here, and let's analyze this graph, and let's find the, the, the zero. And uh, it's going to ask me for a lower bound, so I'm going to say, well, let's go on that side of the zero I want, and uh, let's go over to the other side of the zero I want, and it'll make this calculation for the zero. Um, you know, yours might say, mine on my handheld said 1.5, uh, 1 it's, it's, it's rounding, and um, I'm going to grab that and drag it. Um, and uh, if I want that to greater accuracy, um, I think I just go to the plus sign and I, I, I press a, an enter on the plus sign and uh, it comes out to more decimal places. And so when I look at that, I have 1.4646 uh, or 1.465 uh, to three places. So C is my answer on this final one. And that's it. I hope this has been helpful.